Yo, what's up? Welcome inside the opening line. Corey Parson, the fantasy executive, coming to you on Wednesday. My man Armando Marcel hanging in for the vacation and the European vacation and Benny Ricciardi. Armando, what's good with you, big homie? Man, I'm glad to be here. It's the first time doing this show with you, but you and I have recorded podcast. We, we, we banged some out before. Uh, I see Benny's having a good time, man. He, I, I, he already picked Amsterdam over Paris, so let's see what his final verdict is once he gets back from uh, Europe side. Oh, knowing Benny, uh, I know why he picked Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know, I know. Trust me, I know, man. I, I am not surprised, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's awesome, man. It, everyone needs a break, and I'm, I'm glad he's getting his, man. He's out there with uh, leaving the family and, and enjoying his time, man. So that's a good thing out there for him. No doubt. Shout out to Benny and his wife. I believe both of them are, are celebrating birthdays. So they're doing a big willy style over there uh, across the pond. We got business to take care of on this side, though. I'm um, getting to some waiver wire today. We'll really start to jump into and break down these week five lines. And I, before we get into waiver wires, um, I want to get your opinion on what's been going on this season uh, with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, mm-hmm. I know that you are a, a, you're, you're a South Florida guy. You're a Miami Dolphins supporter. Um, we're seeing an NFL team tank, son, right in front of our eyes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's just they are awful. Um, I, I like what the coaches – look, I like the plan the coach has. I just don't think he has the personnel. Uh, you know, I like his philosophy. I, I like his thought process. I like what the Dolphins are doing. This is what teams need to do, in my opinion, build through the draft, uh, not overpay for free agents. Uh, and look, it's going to be some time before this team is relevant, but I think they're at least putting the pieces of the puzzle together the right way. We've seen teams like, you know, Green Bay, New England, Pittsburgh, some of the top teams in the league over the years build through the draft. Uh, and that's just the way I, I think they should be doing it. We've even seen it with the Rams. They, they've been doing it the same way, you know. Um, so right now they suck. Uh, to completely honest with you, they suck. They're terrible. They're, they're a team that, I mean, you've seen it in the spreads. They, they've been, what, 20-point 20, 20 dogs, 16-point dogs, 18-point dogs. Uh, and, and this is at home at times. So really, really bad team. And But, you know, if you're looking at the, the big picture, I think they're doing it the right See, way. See, where I would disagree with you at is because of the nature of the sport of football being such a violent game, tanking is like, in my opinion, bad form because somebody can get real hurt. And then you got players putting bad tape out there also that could affect them in the future. Or uh, Brian Flores, Flores is not going to be the coach of this team next year. Um, you know, they go, they draft Tua, they bring in Jim Harbaugh, and it's like, okay, well, last year was aberration, but you still got people that's trying to recover in their careers from what was this season for the Dolphins. And I actually think that that's why a lot of people have spoken up and say, hey, I want to be out. I want, tra- I want to get traded from here. And I'm okay with that. I have yeah. no problems with the people that want to be out. If they don't want to tank, they don't want to be part of it, I totally understand it. So uh, a lot of people have complained about, oh, you're not a team player. I disagree with that. You, you know what? There's one thing about being a team player, and then there's one thing about, like you said, I'm looking out for my career. And I think some of these players that want out are just looking out for their career. They want to be uh, in a team that's playing for something. They, they don't want to be part of of an organization that just doesn't care about winning, doesn't care about anything. And that's what the Dolphins are right now. Uh, unfortunately, I think they've done it wrong for so many years that this is probably the only way to do this. It's just dissect this entire team and, and start from scratch just because it's never worked any other way for them. They've tried in the free agency. They've tried making trades and it's typically backfired for them. It's just, yeah. they've had terrible, terrible experiences. Uh, doing Tannehill's contract was a mistake. Yeah. Um, letting Jarvis Landry walk was a mistake. You know what I'm saying? Countless times that we've seen, and Adam Gates is a guy that doesn't like superstar players, so he's kind of put the organization in that position where the uh, the roster is barren because of his personal ego. What do you think about Jim Harbaugh? Um, I like him. I I think he's a good coach. Okay, I, I really do. I think you he's a good coach. Wouldn't be surprised. So you wouldn't have no problems with him taking the mission. I mean. Michigan after Michigan fires him at the end of this year you wouldn't have no problem with him in Miami I thought they were going to get him when when he was in San Fran before okay. he went to San Fran I, and I was full on board with that you know I I think the Harbaugh uh, brothers are great coaches man I really do I think they, they get good things it's not working for uh uh not working for the one in Michigan right now well yeah I, but I, I think he's good at NFL. and he did good in San Francisco you know oh yeah no he's probably made, better made for the NFL um yeah. let's get into some of these dudes this week I want to start at the running back position um, 
three names, well, two names really jump out to me this week. Uh, well, three names. Jalen Samuels, Tevin Coleman, and Ronald Jones. Have we finally entered Ronald Jones' season? Uh, all right, so I've been getting a ton of questions on Ronald Jones, man. So this is the way I view it. It looks like Tampa Bay is sticking to, their co- to the course and riding the hot hand. Right now, Ronald Jones is the hot hand. I don't think that he's someone you can rely on the rest of the season. I, I really do not feel comfortable saying so. Now, right now, if you're, on, if you're in a bind at the running back position, I, I totally think you could plug him in as a flex play. Um, and he's just been producing. But the problem here is, do we feel confident that that's going to be, you know, the, the, what we see the rest of the way? And I, I'm going to say no. I, I do not think so. I think if he starts struggling, we might see some more pain. Barber, uh, and, you know, it's been two great weeks. But the, the week before uh, last, he just wasn't on the field a ton. You know, yeah, he got the touches. He dominated touches. And, and he did good with the opportunity. But he wasn't on the field a ton. So I, I still have some, you know, concerns about, you know, rest of season, Ronald Jones. But right now, I think he could be of help for a lot of people uh, in fantasy world. Uh, Tevin Coleman getting ready to come back, at least if not this week in week six. And also Jalen Samuel, if you saw him catch a ton of passes on Monday night. Yeah, so Tevin Coleman would be the one in that list I prioritize. Once he returns, I think he's going to get the full workload again. Uh, we already know running backs in this offense can be very successful. Uh, I we drafted him pretty high in, in preseason because of that. I don't think anything changes. I, I know he's been dealing with injuries. Now, that is something obviously we cannot predict. But once he returns, I think you're going to be able to plug him in as a you know low end RB two with plenty of upside here uh, moving forward. So long as he's healthy, I I do not see a, a, a you know a time where he cannot produce those kind of numbers, especially in this kind of offense under Shanahan here. And then when you look at Jalen Samuels. I, I like adding him. I really do. I just don't know if this is something that we should expect moving forward. They play the Bengals. Bengals is a very bad defense here. Uh, they, you know, I think that this offense is going to kind of lean to that short, short pass uh, you know, route here and the little dump off. So Samuels is likely going to have a pretty decent role moving forward. But I just don't think it's someone you want to rely on on a week-to-week basis. i still be adding him uh, as you know, uh, some running back depth, especially if you own Connor here. Uh, but not so much. This is a week, you know, Corey, where I wrote in my, my waiver wire article. I'm not going to go and overspend on anyone, and I'm not going to go out of my way to, you know, force anyone on my roster. These are guys that I, I would add, ex- for the exception of Coleman. However, he's owned in, in over 40% of the league, so I typically stay away from these guys. But if Coleman is out there, yeah, I'm prioritizing someone like Coleman this week and adding him because once he returns, I think he can produce running back numbers, the rest, uh, running back two numbers the rest of the way. Uh, yeah, I'm a Melvin Gordon supporter. I mean, excuse me, a Tevin Coleman. I said Melvin Gordon. Tevin yeah. Coleman supporter. What I worry about is Shanahan just looked at the running back and it's just like, okay, running back, go. Running back, go. Running back, go. So it's no real running back. It's just a, a, a group of guys that with numbers and no names. But um, uh, Tevin Coleman, I think, would be the most talented guy. And it'll be yeah. interesting to see what he gets uh, back in the offense and, have, and, and healthy and up to speed. Uh, Marlon Mack. We're going to check the injury reports today, but we kind of feel like he couldn't miss today. We'll see how that goes. Would you rather have Jordan Wilkins or Naheen Himes? I think this is a week where you, you would want Himes, especially in the matchup here against the Chiefs. They're probably going to be chasing points. Uh, and I wrote some numbers here on Himes, and, and it's a small sample size, just 20 games. But uh, with Mac on the field, uh, it's 16 games. Uh, Heinz is averaging 7.5 fast points, 3.1 uh, receptions, uh, four targets, and 20.8 receiving yards. With Mac off the field, uh, that number increases. So uh, averaging seven receptions, 16.5 fantasy points, nine targets, and 42 receiving yards. I know it's a small sample size, but those are pretty significant numbers. And when you look at potential game script here, you have to think that they're going to be passing the ball. So I would rather have Hines this week as a streaming option. Not comfortable about it because he's not an in-between-the-tackle runner, fan. But if he's going to be able to catch some passes out of the backfield, he should give you a nice floor here uh, in PPR formats. And Jordan Wilkins, no, no interest in Jordan Wilkins? I, I look at him because he's a traditional runner. Traditional yeah. between-the-tackle runner. And Hines is the guy that, that – you know, Hines does have the upside because of the pass-catching ability. But I think Jordan Wilkins – I would give Jordan Wilkins a slight edge because I think that he can get more snaps and touches. 
Yeah, it, and for me, this is just a matter of uh, of the game script. It, okay. If I'm looking for an in between the tackle runner, absolutely. I, I, if if you think this game is going to be close, that makes a ton of sense. But Chiefs are 11 point favorites at home right now, man. So I don't expect the Colts to keep this close. We saw them struggle against the Raiders last week. Uh, and and if Hilton plays, that, that's also a big factor here, whether Hilton plays or not. You know. Uh, so I, right now I lean Hines and PPR, but if you're looking for you know long term. Yeah, Wilkins, if you expect Mac to miss a couple games. Um, what do you, what do you think about this Dexter Williams in, in uh, Green Bay? Uh, no interest. <laughs> and it's All just right, tough cool. to have yeah, interest. You know? No, I, I, I feel you on that one. Um, let's move over to the wide receivers. I think some of the big names on the wire this week, um, Golden Tate obviously comes to mind. I don't think Cortland Sutton's available in too many places, but he could be out there also. But let's focus on Tate getting in that offense with Daniel Jones. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he's someone that if he's out there, I'm gonna focus. I'm gonna focus on getting uh, just because we know his his upside. We know what he can do. Problem is, we don't know what role he's gonna have here. I like Sterling Shepard a ton. I've been a big Sterling Shepard guy, uh, you know. And they have Evan Ingram, so I still think Tate is gonna be third in the pecking order here. Uh, I don't know what that means. It's something that we're gonna have to you know see. But I'd definitely be adding him as a stash. I won't. Add them and play them this week, unless you're in really tough buying. Uh, it is also a tough matchup for the Giants this week. So I'm not excited about plugging him in right away, but I do think he's someone that you want to add, stash, see what he does, see how they use him in this offense, see what his role is, and then start making decisions uh, on whether or not you can play him on a weekly basis here. No doubt. Um, I would agree with you on that one. I would um... – Look to see what it's going to be before you put him in your lineup. But if you have to put him in, I don't think as a wide receiver three slash flex option in the twelve team league, on um, that it's the end of the world. Uh, Robbie Anderson could be on waiver wires. What do you think about him? Sam Darnold could play this week. Could see him back week six. Obviously, I think Jameson Crowder gets the biggest boost. I don't have no shares of Robbie Anderson. I was off of him this year. But a lot of people that like Robbie Anderson. Darnold could be coming back soon. Uh, if Robbie Anderson was dropped, do you think he's all worthy of a pickup? I'm, I'm on the same boat as you, Corey. I, I had no interest in Robbie heading into the season. I don't have much interest in him now. Hit and miss player in a bad offense. Uh, wasn't really doing much before. It, 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 it's a situation I'm avoiding. I agree with you 100%. The one that benefits the most there is Crowder. I think in PPR formats, if Crowder's available, because he's also around in some waiver wires, I'd prioritize him over Anderson. Um, and I prioritize Tate over Anderson myself as well. So this is just not someone I'd be targeting uh, unless you're looking for a high upside, you know, pl player that you want to plug in your flex from time to time in good matchups. That, aside from that, I have no interest. Um, uh, some more interesting names right here. I think Deontay Johnson may be the wide receiver pickup of the week, depending on if he's out there or not. Also seen a lot of love for Muhammad Sanu this week. Yeah, Deontay Johnson is someone that, you know, I talked about in last week's article, did a good job, had a great Monday night football uh, game this week again. It uh, looks like him and Rudolph are in sync. They have the connection there. Uh, and someone I'm – listen, someone that if he's available, I'm picking up. I picked him up in my, my uh, league last week just because I want to see what he did Monday night. He played to my expectations. Someone that I might be rolling in the flex in good matchups as well. Uh, regarding Sanu, man – I recommended him a lot in late rounds of, of drafts this year just because he provides a nice, safe floor. He's not someone that has a ton of upside, and I was not expecting this type of consistency. But when you look at him in PPR formats over the years, he's just been someone that's been reliable as a wide receiver four, he's wide receiver dog. five. He's a professional wide receiver. He's a professional football player. He goes out there and he gets it done on a team that is going to be a lot of turnover on next year. Yeah, and not only that, when you look at where he's, you know, where he has the most successes out of the slot, and now that they have Ridley and Jones on the outside, it's very easy for him to have success here as, uh, as a slot receiver. So I've always thought he was a good option. In PPR formats, if he's around, I'd be prioritizing him, especially if you need help at wide receiver. There's a lot of injuries at that position right now. Uh, so Sanu is someone I would be totally fine with plugging in uh, at, in, in PPR formats, that is. Um, speaking of injuries at the wide receiver position, Still waiting to see what the word is going to be with Devontae Adams this week. I'm a big Geronimo Allison supporter. Obviously, slow start to the season. He's been cut in a lot of places. If Adams is out this week, it's a good chance to go back and pick him up uh, in that matchup against my Dallas Cowboys. 
Yes, it, it would be because I think that they're going to have to pass the ball in that game. I think Dallas is going to be able to put up points against this defense, uh, especially what, what what we saw the Eagles do uh, on the ground last week against Green Bay. Having a running back like Zeke, and I'm sure you're happy about him finally signing and you know getting on board. We haven't spoken since, but uh, having a running back like that, well, listen, they're going to be able to run run it down the throats here uh, against Green Bay. So I think Green Bay is going to be chasing points here. Uh, I, I like Addison. I, before the season, so far I've been wrong. Before the season, I was Addison over MVS. I thought it was very close. I was Addison over MVS. You know? MVS clearly the guy, though. Yeah, clearly the guy. But right now, if Adam's sideline, Addison's going to step up in a big way. I also think Jimmy Graham is going to step up in a big way here uh, if, if Adams is indeed out, which is trending that way, especially with this type of injury. We've seen in the past, it's kept players out at multiple weeks. You know, turf toe is, is serious stuff for some of these guys. Yeah, the way that uh, you can't heal from turf toe by playing on it. You kind of got to get your feet up. Uh, a couple more interesting names. Antonio Callaway, I believe, is coming back from a suspension. And then Auden Tate has been interesting, too. Listen, the story with A.J. Green keeps changing. A.J. Green is trending in the right direction. He's probably good enough to play. Uh, A.J. Green's in the last year of his contract, and this team is 0-4, and A.J. Green is like, you know what? I can get a new deal someplace else and be healthy this year. But Auden Tate, on the other hand, is somebody the past couple of weeks we've seen an uptick in his production. He's going to be a guy I'm going to be going after on the wire tonight, and I might give some looks at Antonio Callaway, too, but I'm so heavily invested in Odell Beckham. I need him to get going. Um, what do you think about Tate and Callaway? So for Tate, I think he's a good short-term, you know, uh, pickup now. He's seen 16 targets over the last two games. Like you mentioned, he's seen an uptick. Uh, you have Ross that's expected to be out. You, Green is also out. Uh, so there's going to be someone that needs to step up there. We, we, we know Boyd has been doing his thing. But Tate is someone that can come in there and, you know, see – six to eight targets and at times even more we already saw that with 10 the week before so uh definitely someone that John Ross is most likely going to be out this week well he's he's expected to be out a couple weeks uh from what I read you know with that with that shoulder injury so for that reason they're 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 in need of help of help out of their pass catchers so I think Tate's gonna have a role and if you need immediate help he's someone that I would be targeting because I think you can easily plug him in in the flex there now Thing is, he's a short-term solution. He's not a long-term because yep. once Green comes back, but like you said, there's Green's still a couple of weeks away, man. Uh, they said it. It was going to be four to six weeks. People are asking, hey, you know, why isn't Green back? I always projected long. When they say four to six, I'm always projecting six. I, I'm, I'm preparing for the worst when these scenarios, man. I agree. I'm, not, you know, I'm not preparing for the best because you're just leaving yourself up uh, for failure here. So there's still two weeks away from his initial – you know, and what I read last is he's a couple weeks away. So a couple weeks, two weeks, if he's back, you know, after week six, that's what I was expecting anyway. So uh, you can count on Tate at least uh, for two more weeks if you need help at receiver. And as far as Callaway, problem here uh, for me, Corey, is I like the, the, the upside, but there's too many mouths to feed on this. Yeah. You know, there's too many mouths to feed. So I don't know if we're going to find consistent production. I would add Callaway as a stash in really deep leagues, but – in shallow leagues, he's not someone I'm going to be targeting, man. Um, I made a conscious effort coming into the season not to roster a single Miami Dolphin. But Devontae Parker, Preston Williams, Albert Wilson, is there any fantasy value in the, Dor- in the Dolphins wide receiving group? Um, the only one would be Preston Williams for me. Uh, he hasn't been, like, super efficient, but – He's a leading the team in targets. Uh, he's in there in the, you know, a, a re- the red zone guy for them as far as target share is concerned as well. And a team that's going to be trading a ton. So he's displayed some nice upside. He's also made some bad drops. Uh, I just think that that's part of, you know, the growing pains for him, but I do think that he's going to be a, a solid wide receiver. I do think he has that potential of being a solid wide receiver in the NFL. So if I'm going to get anyone from the Dolphins, I, I, Go for him just because of the upside, but not someone I'm going to be relying on on a weekly basis either, man, because this this is just an awful, awful offense. We've seen them just do so bad. So it's tough to tr- – it is really tough to trust them. But Williams would be the guy. I'm not really too interested in Parker, man. Uh, go to the tight end position. Chris Herndon is getting ready to get back on the field. I think he's a good pickup. I don't play him until Donald comes back, though. 100% on board with you. I'd add him, stash him. 
and Wayne Todorno gets back on the field before plugging him in because Fox cannot pass that ball, man. It's really, really bad to watch. I, I don't know what's worse, watching Fox play uh, football and run that offense or watching the Dolphins play, man. Yeah, I uh, just don't watch the Dolphins. Uh, <laughs> uh, Will Disley, a lot of people jumped on him last week, scored again for them. I worry about the touchdown dependence, but the tight end position is a position where I can see it. Yeah, you know, look, last week the, the expectations were high. He was playing the Cardinals, who struggle immensely against tight ends, so I'm not surprised at all. Uh, the thing is that it's tough to ignore. He's right now – fourth in the NFL or tied fourth with five red zone targets, you know, leading his team in that department. Uh, Russell Wilson has been very, very uh, open about his love for Disley and how he expects Disley to continue this production. I'm not sure it's going to happen, but if he's out there, I'm adding, especially in such a volatile position and I'll be playing him honestly until he starts cooling down. Uh, that's just the way I'm going to approach Disley. I, I it, it's, it's, <laughs> It's tough to ignore what he's been doing. I know that he's relying heavily on the touchdowns, but if they're going to be utilizing him in the red zone, and this is a team that can move the ball and can get in a scoring position, I'm going to be uh, on board with him uh, until I see otherwise. Um, what about guys like Jimmy Graham, Gerald Everett, and Dawson Knox? All right, so Gerald, Gerald Everett is someone that, if you need a streaming play, I talked a little bit about him yesterday in the roster coach show. I, I, would, I wouldn't mind streaming him. I wouldn't be depending him on a week-to-week -week basis. Uh, he also has uh, a, a pretty high uh, target share in the red zone. I believe it's 26 or 27% of the Rams' red zone target share, which is a pretty high number considering, you know, uh, all, of, all of the weapons on this offense. Um, and then you look at, um, you know, how this offense rolls. It, it, it's, it's fine with me forever. Uh, not someone I'm going to rely on on a weekly basis. Jimmy Graham, if Adams is out, I'd be adding him. I'd be playing him. Uh, this, is, this is not a terrible matchup for him. But once Adams is back, he's not someone I'm going to trust on a week-to-week -week basis. If Adams is silent, though, I do think Graham is someone you can probably depend on uh, each and every week. I definitely believe he can see a much higher target share with Adams on the sidelines. People forget, you know, how much volume Adam takes up in this offense and um, – I know he struggled early on in the season, but a lot of that, in my opinion, has to do with the matchups here. As far as Knox is concerned, it's, it's really dependent on Alex Stadden. Huh? Rookie tight end is tough. Yeah, it, it's tough. You know, I, I might rather take a, a, a shot on someone like Noah Fant. You know, instead, uh, it has a little bit more upside. I know Knox has been pretty impressive so far, but uh, it's just very tough to trust uh, here. So I, I probably well, – if you're looking for a streaming option, uh, you know, going to the Bengals and they're dealing with injuries, uh, Tyler Eifert. They play the Cardinals. No it's doubt. a really good bounce back a spot for Dalton. So Eifert would be someone I would not mind streaming, to be honest with you, uh, if you're in a bind at tight end. Not someone I trust week to week, but at least this week. So if you're looking for someone to stream this week, that would be someone. Uh, and, I say, and finally, I say this with glee and joy, and I think that you would be able to agree with me. And I'm not really coming at Trey Burton. I'm coming at that POS Bigfoot, Jared Cook. Um, Jared Cook and Trey Burton belong on waiver wires, don't they? Yeah, man, it's it's tough. It's tough to see that. I don't know why people keep going to Jared Cook like he's going to do something. The, the only the only thing that I, look, and I'm not I, I if if there's options like the ones we, if Disney's out there, I drop Jared Cook for Disney 100. percent Um, but the thing with Jared Cook is it, it, the volume hasn't been. What we expected, but it hasn't been awful. The issue is, I'm not a Teddy guy, man. I'm just not a Teddy guy. He's a game manager. I love Teddy Bridgewater. Really? I'm not a Teddy guy, man. I think he's a game manager at best. And I think we're seeing this offense just run a much more conservative approach, which should technically help Cook. It just hasn't come into fruition. But the targets were there last week, man. He just didn't produce. Uh, he no, really that's didn't. the thing about him. He doesn't produce. Yeah. And it continues to be that way. So they go some waiver wire stuff. And don't forget, you can get all that information over on fantasyguru.com. Armando, the crew, getting it done, pumping out that good content each and every day, each and every week. That's fantasyguru.com. All right, let's get ready to try to make some money this week. Uh, we start Thursday night. I don't like this at all. It's the Rams and the Seahawks. The Seahawks are laying a point and a half. Um, I don't believe they're going to get Jared Goff on Thursday night, which makes it probably a better spot for the Seahawks. But then again, the backup could very well be better than Jared Goff. I'm not a Jared Goff guy, but that's just me. 
Yeah, I, I actually don't mind Jared Goff, man, but the, this Rams team um, on the road is is much different than they are at home. So that's concern. And then when you look at the line movement, the the, the Rams open up with an implied team total of 25. It's gone down to 23.5, and Seahawks have done the reverse. So they opened at 24, and now they're 25.5. Probably a game I stay away from because I do think I that the Rams – that, that the Rams can pick this, you know, secondary apart if if they're in their on their game and coming off a loss like like they did uh, against the Bucks, I they might be out for for some vengeance here. But I, if I had to pick, I'd probably lean on betting Seattle here. But I I wouldn't bet this game at all. Yeah, this is not uh, something I'm going to bet Thursday night. I probably find a player prop or two uh, to ride with to have me a little bit of action. But I won't be touching the spread or the total. Uh, Arizona and the Cincinnati Bengals. I keep getting burnt every week by the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm willing to touch that stove again. I'm probably not the – I'm not – I would rather parlay the money line at minus 170 with something. But if I had to lay the three and a half, I would. I think I – don't, I, don't, I don't think the Bengals drop to 0-5 at home versus the Cardinals. Man, this is a tough one for me um, because I'm not a full-on, you know um, – Cardinal supporter here, and I, I'm, I don't believe this, this team is, is someone that you need to be afraid of. Problem here is I haven't seen much out of the Bengals. Now, defensively, they did a pretty good job against the Steelers. However, they're playing, they were playing against Mason Rudolph, so that's something we have to note here. Um, it, it, if you, this is a game where I'm probably going to stay away from two, to be honest with you, uh, and, and not bet. But I agree. If anything, I, I, I'd probably just lay money line here. Uh, and, and take uh, Bengals because I do think that if they're going to win a game, this is a game they can certainly win here. Now, for those of us, for everybody on that's been checking out last week, um, say one second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, this is my daughter. I make sure she's good to go. Um, so, everybody was watching the program last week, and me and Benny had that conversation about that crooked number, the five. And what we saw is that once again, this past week, this is three weeks in a row now, or four weeks in a row where the five has led to a blowout of some sort. This week, we have three fives. The first one comes with the Falcons and the Texans. I tell y'all all the time, the Falcons are the worst team in pro sports against the spread. This year alone, between the preseason and the regular season, they're one and seven against the spread. This team, Dan Quinn teams, do not cover numbers. They are the biggest money burners in pro sports. The Texans are laying five at home. The Texans are going to blow them out. I'll lay the five with Houston. Listen, and you mentioned how bad this team is against the spread. Last year, they were 5-11 and 11 against the spread, 2-6 uh, and six on the road. This game is in Houston. I like Houston here a lot. Uh, and the just thing that worries about Houston Armando is they've had two bad offensive performances at home. They have. They have. But it's tough to ignore how bad – you know, this team, uh, as far as the Atlanta is concerned, against the spread they've been. And then when you look at Houston last year at home, they were 4-3-1 and one against the spread. So a, a little bit above 500. Obviously, that you would like to see a little bit better. But when you look at the odds here and the numbers, I, I, I would be okay with taking, you know, Houston here. And I think when, when, you, when, when you think about it, maybe because of last week's performance, you're seeing this number here for them, you know, uh, against the Panthers. I, I think they were – they were favored last week by three and a half, weren't they? Yep. So I think that's, you know, I think there's some people being a little hesitant on, on, on this line, but I, I like it. I, I like Houston. And just to go back. People uh, are scared of the five, and that's why I'm saying I'm not scared of the five. I think we embrace the five. The five is clearly saying blowout this year. I, I think this is a game they can easily win here and buy by a decent chunk. I, I know Atlanta is a team that at times you, you got to be concerned about because they are very talented. There's no denying that. But when you look at their numbers against the spread, you mentioned the ones this year. I looked at the ones last year. It, it's just very difficult to think they cover here. It really is. This is a, a, Atlanta doesn't cover spreads. They just yeah. forget about and it. And to go back, look, I want to point something out uh, before we moved on uh, to the next thing. Oh, the Bengals, you, you talked about the three and a half. It, they opened at four, right? And – a lot of the bets were coming in on the Cardinals, yet the, it still went to three and a half. So I know it's not a significant jump, but 73% of the bets were going uh, uh, with the Cardinals against the spread, yet it, the, the line moved in the Bengals' favor. So that's something that to, when, when I'm looking at these things, 
when I see that, that's a big, big thing for me yeah. because that's a signal. That's a signal right there. That there's heavy money. It, it might be the, the 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 quantity might be on Cardinals, but there's some heavy money on the Bengals, in my opinion. You know, the big betters are hammering the Bengals this week, and they're yeah. going to keep pushing that number down. You'll get to that a nice. You 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 they'll, you'll probably get that at two and a half uh, by the time. But then again, it, it could. I think it probably levels out somewhere around two and a half and three. I would play it at three right now if I had to, but I love the money line. What you said, the Bengals and the parlay. Houston, I'm laying the five. And I'm yeah. telling you, this bet against Atlanta is a very good strategy. Uh, interesting contest this week. I might actually go up to this game this weekend. Uh, the Ravens and the Steelers are playing in Pittsburgh. Baltimore laying a three and a half on the road. Um, man, division games are tough, especially in the AFC North. Baltimore coming off a loss, Pittsburgh coming off a win, the games at home. It's not the arch rivalry of World War Three days. We got new characters with, with Mason Rudolph and Lamar Jackson. You know, some of those old, uh, older, older guys that have been around part of this rivalry no longer is there. But still a very big rivalry in the AFC North, Pittsburgh trying to climb back in it. Um, I'm probably going to stay away from this. If I had to, lay, if I had to do something, I would money line the Ravens. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, man, this is this is a tough one, but uh, th- this is this is what stood out to me: Baltimore five and three uh, uh, against the the spread last year on the road. Now taking them straight up, I like that. Why? Because last year they went six and one straight up uh, with Lamar Jackson under center. Um, so in, in a road game where they need to win, Pittsburgh coming up, not a short week, but they played on Monday night. I like this this taking Baltimore straight up. I, I do think they cover, but I do prefer taking them straight up because I would not be surprised. Right now it's three and a half from what I'm seeing. I wouldn't be surprised if they win by three. You know, okay. and that half half is going to just destroy you. So I take them money line here. Uh, but if you see it go down to three, I take it at three as well. Uh, the Buffalo Bills and the Tennessee Titans. This is a funny one right here. Tennessee is good catching points like they did last week. When yeah. Tennessee is laying points, it scares me. Buffalo coming off their first loss of the season. This three is the perfect number right here. Um, I would money line the Titans, but it's not one of my favorite bets. No, this is a game I'd probably stay away from. Uh, now, if, if you, this is what I would do. If, if you want to take a chance, take the Bills with the three points, I know Josh Allen's in the concussion protocol. If he plays, I think this line sees a, a, a reversal here. I, I think the Bills might become one or two point favorites on the road. Interesting. If if Josh Allen plays, I think that right now this line was made with the idea that Josh Allen is not going to play. Okay. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if we see a, a one or two point favorite uh, for the Bills if Allen plays here. Oh, uh, Chicago and Oakland. The Bears travel out to Oakland. Uh, this is probably Oakland's last home game until November. Um, it just so happens that the A's are in the playoffs. May just be for the night. But, um, but the A's left. The, 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 the Oakland is leaving Oakland after this. They're going on the road. Matter of fact, this game right here is in London. Yeah, I was going to tell you, this game's in London, man. It's in London. Yeah, the Raiders are not going to be home for a while. Um, they're the only team that shares a sport, uh, that, that shares a stadium with a baseball team in today's NFL. It's amazing. Um, but – we have a London game, and we have that magic number of five. And once again, I'm going – and I listen, I do not like betting on the Chicago Bears. I do not like Mitch Trubisky. But the truth of the matter is this. Especially if Trubisky doesn't play this week, I like the Bears even more. Now, yes. I'm ready to lay the five, but do you have any trends on these London games? No. I, I feel I, like there's I, been some blowouts in these games. There have been some blowouts, and there, there, there's been some lop, lopsided matchups here. Look, I, I'm with you. I actually think Chase Daniel would be a, a, a good – He's an you know, upgrade. I, I, he is. He, he's an upgrade. He can move the ball. Uh, he held his own against a tough Vikings defense. I, I'm, ta- I'm, I'm taking Bears here. Uh, I'm taking Bears. I wouldn't mind taking them with the five – giving the five points. Uh, just – they're a far superior team. They really are a, a far superior team. The, the defense is out of this world. Uh, we've seen Oakland struggle. I know they, they – held their own, and they, they did what they did last week against the Colts, but we're talking about a ferocious defense here, man. They, I don't see – I really don't see a way that Oakland keeps this close or wins this game. I, I don't see a path for that. No doubt. Uh, Jacksonville and Carolina, one of the more interesting contests of the week. Um, this Carolina's laying three and a half on a two-game winning streak. 
Now you get Kyle Allen coming home. You get Jaguars coming in on the road, coming off, off, off a very impressive win. Um, but I don't like the Jaguars in back-to-back road games. I don't know if I like Carolina laying three and a half. I would prefer this number at three. If, if I'm taking anything right now, it, it would be Jaguars getting the three and a half. But right. it, it's, it's a game I'm probably not going to be touching just because I, I think that's a great point. Two back-to-back road games. Carolina's defense, in my opinion, is underrated. We saw what they were able to do in Houston last week. Um, so th- this is going to be a, a, a defensive game. Now, what, what I might have some interest in is in that 41, you know, total. I, I, I might have some interest, you know. I wouldn't be surprised to see this be you know, a 17, 14, 17, you know, 13 game. Like a low-scoring game. In, yeah, in, I, would, in I wouldn't be surprised when, you know, I'm not expecting none of these offenses to really start slinging it here. Um, and, and you're going to see, you know, the Panthers take that approach of just kind of use McCaffrey, run the ball, uh, you know, the short dink and dunk, take some time off the clock. So um, I have a little bit of interest here in the under. Not, not a ton, um, but some interest here in the under. Oh, right, cool, cool, cool. I'll keep that in mind. Um, come back stateside once again. Well, we're already back stateside. But let's come up the coast to New York Giants and Daniel Jones, the legend of Daniel Jones. Um, <laughs> they're catching five and a half at home. There goes that five again. I love Minnesota laying five on the road, like laying the five and a half on the road this week. I probably think that that's the safest team laying the five. Um, yeah. You know, I, I would feel best uh, bet, betting them, to be honest with you. I, I – Vikings should win this game pretty easily here, so I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm I'm with you on that. Vikings getting uh, laying the five. I, I, Kirk I think Cousins will bounce back this week. The thing about Kirk Cousins is Kirk Cousins can't win those road games, or maybe even not those home games. Kirk Cousins' main problem is he can't beat the teams in the NFC North, and that is who the but those are the teams that they brought him near to beat. So he's got to get that together. But the Vikings, the defense, their running game on the road against the Giants, I think they all rack them up pretty quickly. And I like uh, Dalvin Cook is probably an RB1 this week. Uh, the Patriots and the D.C. football team, um, Colt McCoy, my man, should get the start this week. But there's no way. I'm, 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 I've bet on Washington each of the last two weeks. I'm done betting on D.C. Um, if I do, I probably leave this game alone, Armando. But I, if I do anything, I lay the Patriots or I see what their team total is. And if it's over 30, um, the Patriots team total is 29. I would, if anything, I would bet the Patriots score over 29 points. Yeah, that would be the only, you know, bet. I, I, I have a man, and this might be silly, but I have a golden rule in, in NFL, not college. NFL, when I see a spread this high, I'd stay away. I mean, it's just very difficult for, for it to be covered so, you know, consistently. Um, and and I, I, would, I would take the, the over there on the 30 points because even if they're winning by a ton, we see the Patriots turn up the score. Uh, oh, yeah, the time. Patriots don't mind. The Patriots beat the shit so, out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, here we go. Another big one. Philadelphia and the Jets. The Eagles laying 13 and a half on the road coming off that victory from last week. Um, this is probably a no bet for me, but one thing I will say, if Sam Donald plays, I, I'll, I'll take the Jets at 13 and a half. Yeah, if Sam, if Sam Darnold does end up playing, I, I agree with you there. Um, I, I think we'll see a, an adjustment in the line if that occurs. But yeah. right now it's a game I'm staying away from completely here. No doubt. Uh, Philadelphia, I mean, t- Tampa and New Orleans is interesting. New Orleans laying three at home. Both teams coming off of impressive victories, even though New Orleans uh, was aided by the referees to get their victory. Offensive pass and the my ass. Um, with that being said, that's neither here nor there. Um, Tampa Bay catching three in this spot is real interesting to me. I don't know if I'm willing to pull the trigger, but I just think about Jameis Winston in that zone. <laughs> you know what? This is probably not a good idea. Man, I, you know, it's That's funny because – That's what he ate the L at. Well, he ate the W at. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 this is, uh, you know, I thought about this this morning. I'm like, man, you know, this, this Tampa Bay team, you either get the good one or the bad one. It's either good Jameis or bad Jameis. If, look, if we get good Jameis, I think they go in there and outright win this game. I really do. It's very, they're all capable of doing that. We saw – look what they did against the Rams, which in my opinion is it's a superior defense here. Now, problem is you have – we've seen what the New Orleans Saints have been doing. They've been managing games. They've been doing a very good job at that. They've been winning, keeping games close, and just not allowing their opponents to get on the board quite often. And that concerns me because uh, we, we've seen Jameis do bad here. So, I, 
Bobby stay away. The over under is interesting, and I wanted your thoughts on that, man, because it's forty seven and a half. That's too world, high, right? I, I'm thinking the same thing, just because of the way that you know the the, the Saints have been playing football. They, they've been managing games, so that's something I might consider here. Maybe taking the under. It's tough though, because if it if it does become a shootout. You know, if Winston it comes hot like he was last week and the week before and he puts up points on the board, it's going to be tough to keep that game under 47 and a half. Um, so it just really is dependent. Saints can't keep up with that kind of scoring. They're not – there's not Drew Brees. Correct. Bridgewater is going to win the football game. Is he going to cover the three? I don't know. But I, I agree with you on that total, the under. It, it, looks, it looks very high at total. And that, that's what stood out to me in this game the most. It's just the spread is too tough because if it comes good Winston, I think they win. You know, I really do think they are right win. Um, the Broncos are going to Los Angeles. The Broncos catching six and a half on the road. Division matchups are very tough, especially in the AFC West. Um, the Chargers, Armando, is like, I'm not ready to lay six and a half with the Chargers. I'm not. I yeah. am not. I am not. And what's, what's you know, we, we, look at, we look at, you know, Denver. I, I still think that they're – Decent team. I, I'm, I'm not a Joe Flacco guy by any means, but he's he's a competent quarterback. Uh, he's been in these situations before. Um, looked pretty good last week, you know, against a solid defense here uh, in the Jaguars. So, like you said, the, these divisions games, man, I, I, I tend to, if, the, if that spread is that much, I tend to just stay away from because normally we see these a little bit closer. I would prefer a three and a half, you know, point spread here if I want to take some action. Uh, again, though, when you look at the 44 and a half over under here, that screams under to me uh, as well. Um, really don't expect these teams to shoot out here. The Any only way on that? The over 44 is if they go to overtime. Um, and, yeah. you know, that's, uh, that's what would, would concern me with that. It's probably a no bet here. Um, the Chargers, um, I'm, I'm just not – the Chargers are a tough team for me to handicap. Um, the Dallas Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers, the Cowboys laying three and a half at home. The Packers have been very tough against the Cowboys, particularly in Dallas. Um, another, another big spot for Dallas, but I would money line the Cowboys. I probably wouldn't lay the three and a half mainly because of Aaron Rodgers, but I do like the Cowboys to bounce back and get a win this week. If Adams is officially out, uh, I wouldn't mind laying the three and a half. I agree um, with you on that. You're right. You know? And when you look at Green Bay last year against the spread on the road, there were two and four. Two five and one. Uh, I, I, the reason why is just because I think this is a perfect offense to keep Rodgers off the field. When you have Zeke running the ball, I think they're going to be able to keep him off the field. And I, I do believe the Dallas can put points up against this defense. I know they've looked good, but they were exposed last week. Uh, and I think you know Dallas is going to pick right off of that and be able to put points up on this board uh, against this team. So take giving the I I I lay the three and a half here. Finally, on Indianapolis Colts and the Kansas City Chiefs Sunday night football, the Colts right now catching 11 on the road. If T.Y. Hilton plays, I want the Colts. If T.Y. Hilton is out, it's no bet for me. Yeah, this is no, no bet for me. I, I kind of like the, you know, the implied team total here for uh, Kansas City is 33. Um, within mind, you know, betting the over there, I, I think they're going to be able to put up points here. I really do at will against his defense at home. No doubt. Well, Armando, thank you very much, my man, for uh, stepping through and uh, rocking with me, uh, holding it down for Benny. At the end of the program, every day we give somebody a big piece of chicken, kind of our top performer. I'm going to give my big piece of chicken today to, um, uh, what's son, what's son name from the Nationals? Anthony Rendon came in there last night, got that big hit, sent the Nationals into the division series. He gets my big piece of chicken. You got one, Armando? My big piece of chicken for this week Corey is going to be Ezekiel Elliott running wild against the Packers this weekend. I think we're going to see him eat and do this quite often. First down. My main man, Armando, is Corey Parson, the fantasy executive, the opening line. We are out.